Okay, welcome again. Uh, we're starting uh, lesson 17 and um, to, uh, continuing our facility location uh, work. And today uh, we're going to talk uh, again, lesson 17 out of chapter 7 in the supplement. And you can see the page numbers there as usual. Um, today uh, we're going to talk about the load distance technique. Um, as you remember the previous lesson, we talked about uh, the weighted criteria um, evaluation system. We talked about the center of gravity technique and then of course the weighted center of gravity technique. And today's lesson we'll talk about um, the load distance technique. If you remember, the center, center of gravity technique was used when alternative locations uh, were, are not provided. Um, and, you, and you remember that we uh, calculated the averages of the locations or the weighted averages. And that's how we, how we uh, uh, proceeded through um, the center of gravity technique. But the key thing to remember about this is that these, this process is used when alternative locations are not provided. Uh, don't, don't forget that. And the, the difference, of course, for today is we're going to use the low distance technique in the cases where alternative locations for the facility are provided. And the process that we're going to use, in short, is uh, we're going to first compute the distance from each alternative to each delivery location. And then for each alternative, you want to compute the distance from that alternative to every location, and then multiply the distance times the load for the alternative, and then add up all of those load distances. Now, this will make more sense when we go through an example. And then from among all of the alternative locations, you want to recommend the site that has the lowest total load distance. And again, uh, one of the things that will be of interest, it could be anything can be used for the distance. It's a, a, a surrogate, if you will, whether it's the driving distance, the straight down line distance. And what we will use in almost every case is the straight line distance. Um, uh, or unless the distance may be given to you, or the driving time or driving cost, anything that could be a surrogate. So that's uh, the process. Now here's an example, and this is a continuation of the Burger Doodle example. And you'll notice here, uh, the way the problem continues is rather than computing just the uh, center of the uh, four, um, uh, service centers for the, uh, we, we've been given three alternative locations with their grid locations. So we, we need to choose now specifically between uh, location one, location uh, three, or location two. Now, if you use your intuition a little bit and remember the last lesson, you'll recall that the actual center of gravity uh, locations were somewhere up in this air, in this vicinity. And so therefore, right away, your intuition would say that location three is, is most likely the one that's going to be selected. And in fact, uh, if you follow along your textbook, you'll find out that that's exactly the case. But aside from that intuition, without any intuition, uh, how is this process uh, going to work? And the way it's going to work is uh, as follows. And as I've said before, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the straight line distance from uh, location one to site A. We're going to ca uh, calculate the straight line distance from uh, site 1 to B, and then site 1 to C, and then also site 1 
to D. Uh, that, that's the first step to calculate these distances. Then with respect to each of these distances, we're going to multiply whatever this distance, distance happens to be times the weight that's associated with that distance. And then we're going to do the same thing. Whatever this distance is times this weight. And then what, similarly, whatever the, this distance is from 1 to C times this 135, and the distance from 1 to D times 60. And then we're going to get all of those, dist all those numbers, and then we're going to add those four distances together. And that pr produces the load distance, what's what we're going to call the load distance for site one. And then we're going to do the same thing for site two and site three and choose whichever one is lowest. Now, how do we calculate? the distances. And of course, we will use Excel for this, but you'll remember uh, back to your high school algebra that in order to calculate the distance from A, which is at location 200, 200, to site 1, which is 360, 180, that straight line distance, and unfortunately, this is not going to be a straight line, but I'll do the best I can, is going to go there. That's the straight line distance. And in order to calculate that, we'll use a little high school algebra, the Pythagorean theorem that you're going to remember. And if you'll notice, this is a, a, a right triangle. This is the right angle that's uh, between the x and the y location. And of course, this is side c. Let's, we're going to call this side B, and this is side A. And if you remember your high school algebra, remember that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or writing this a little bit differently, we know that the square root of a squared plus b squared equals side c, which is what we're looking for. This is, and this is the distance distance from a to one. Okay, I apologize for my still learning how to use this tool, but that's essentially how we're going to do this. Now, the sin, so then the next question is, let me get that scribble off. The next question is, how do we calculate? Because let me write up here what we're going to, what we're trying to compute is the square root of a squared plus. B squared. Okay, that's what we want. And as we said before, this uh, this side is side A. And so the way we're going to calculate this is we're going to take the difference between the excuse me in this case the y locations of A and the y location of one. And of course, the y location of A is 200, and the y location of site 1 is 180, and that difference, of course, is 20. And so that becomes, uh, that becomes B. All right. Similarly, similarly, we'll take, we'll use a different color, we're going to take 
the difference in the X locations between A and N1. And again, this is going to be uh, the difference between 200 and 360. And of course, then side, um, I think I call, actually, I think I called that A before, but it doesn't matter. Then side A is going to be that difference, which in this case is negative 160. Okay. And so this is side A. And as before, this, and this is side B. And so now we just use 20 and negative 160 in this formula. And we're going we're to find the distance, this side C, from, from uh, A to, to site 1. Okay. Now, rather than trying to write this, I'm going to write show you this neatly on the next slide, what this looks like. So the we'll again, what we're what we'll do is we're taking to compute the distance from A to, to site one. It's the x coordinate for A minus the x coordinate for site one squared, the y coordinate for A minus the y coordinate for site one squared, and this is where we substituted in. So here's 160 and 20. Again, that's turns out to be that when you do that calculation, that distance is 161.25. And so then to calculate the load distance, we're going to take the, take the uh, load at A and multiply it by the distance, which turns out to be 12,093.4. Now, that's just one of the process. So you've got this to do this three other times for site one and then do that again for site two for all four locations and then site three for all locations. And I uh, leave it as, as an exercise for you to compute that straight line distance now from site one, for example, to D. One of the things, of course, uh, again, I want to point out is that it really doesn't matter, and hopefully you've anticipated this, that when you calculate these distances, whether the distance is negative or positive really doesn't matter. Because you could have taken one x, uh, loca x location from one minus the x location a, and either way is, is perfectly uh, fine because once you square those terms, the negative is going to go away. Uh, but again, that process is to, um, again, calculate the load for each location times the distance and that add that up four times. Okay. So then we're going to do that for also for location two. And these blue lines represent those distances. And then we're going to do the same thing for location three. Uh, all of those distances and we're going to come up with we're going to come up with a number for each one of those locations a load distance for for site three a load distance for site two and of course a low distance go back to that one for site one and we'll choose the one that's lowest and again as your intuition uh, indicates the, the you go to the last slide as your intuition would indicate it's it'll turn out that indeed the overall load distance for site three is the best because it has the uh, location that's most central uh, uh, most closely actually represents the weighted uh, criteria so but again, this is you're you're required to choose between one of these three sites. Okay, I'm going to also create a uh, obviously and uh, well not obviously, but I'm going to create another video with a uh, that'll show you how to use this and do this in Excel. You can do this by hand, but there's an awful lot of calculations and lots, awful lots of room for error. Well, whereas if you use Excel, 
uh, you can do this very quickly, efficiently, and very accurately. So I would encourage you uh, to do that. Now, uh, last slide. Uh, again, this is a review of the low distance technique. The last slide, I want to talk about the quiz. Again, this will be a little bit different. The quiz will be under uh, Lesson 17. Um, it'll be due anytime before noon on Monday, April the 6th. And um, you'll find the uh, quiz and um, uh, you'll find a Dropbox. And if for some reason you don't have access to Excel, you can work this by hand and submit a copy of your work on G2L. But if you do that, I need a complete copy of your work. All right. So in this case, uh, let me know if you have questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer. All right. Hope all is well. Contact me, as always, if you need to.